This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The last time I spoke up on this channel was Marvel's Avengers, so wake up subscribers, we've got bridges to burn. On release day, I was mesmerized by Cyberpunk 2077 for 15 hours straight on a high-end PC. This is very romantic. Our knees are touching. Uh-oh. Then I discovered that everyone on console had been playing Cyberpunk 2076. $60 in the garbage. Apparently, the corpo Todd Howards over at CD Projekt Red didn't think that a base PS4 with seven years of dust in its butt crack would have any trouble rendering a skyscraping, ray tracing, groundbreaking open world dystopia more graphically demanding than the last game they launched in a broken state on the very same hardware. I mean, even Sony exclusives, optimized specifically for PlayStation, are barely audible over the sound of my PS4 Pro gasping for air like the little engine that could. <laughs> Samurai. So after witnessing for myself on Ultra the blood, sweat, and tears it must have cost to make every object reflect every light source with near perfect realism, to make sightseeing in this neon megalopolis provide just as much meticulous wonder as gawking at a minor character, and to make Keanu Reeves seem like a decent actor, all I can say is how dare those Todd Howards even think about selling this work of art as a buggy, blurry mess for platforms on which no future update could possibly depict Night City the way its architects truly intended. Cyberpunk 2077 is a next-gen video game greatly enhanced by next-gen settings that should have only been published on next-gen machines, and I doubt there's an animator, programmer, or designer anywhere in Warsaw who wanted you to play this on the PS4 more than Christopher Nolan wanted you to watch Tenet on the iPhone. You want to crash a plane? Well, how big a plane? I also suspect that if the developers weren't forced to get it running on last-gen devices, they could have polished the actual content into a bona fide masterpiece instead of spending their valuable time poking an obsolete Xbox with a stick when there's enough life left in it to keep their beautiful labor of love from looking dead on arrival. But don't let that justice boner bug out your pants just yet, because epic marketing blunder and PR nightmare aside, this phenomenal 80% finished game and the talented chumbas behind it do not deserve the blame for some greedy Corpo's mistake. The disinformation currently slandering this game. Won't find a better massage in NC Cali 1 or Cali 2. Kyle, oh. Oh. oh! 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 Uh. What? What uh, is that? I don't know, man. I'm sorry. Is that a guy or something? I, yeah. That's not supposed to be on here, dude. Hey, I'm sorry, man. Hey, we were just trying to like have, have play, have fun. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sneak in on you. Oh, like, no, don't worry about it, man. I was supposed to be checking my email, and then this came up on the why. Yeah. And the hatred being spat on devs by the citizens of cyberspace is the exact breakdown of social order caused by low life wielding high tech during the information age that William Gibson tried to warn us about when he wrote the novel that legitimized cyberpunk as a branch of literature. All it takes is a glitchy start to a city in the computer. Well, then everyone loses their minds. Through widespread interconnected technology. Some people are consensually hallucinating an alternate reality online where this gameplay <laughs> and these graphics This is so good! Wow! <laughs> and dead ass are somehow worse than those found in Watch Dogs Legion. Get stuffed! The scary part is it's the same alternate reality Karens hallucinate on Facebook where free healthcare is somehow worse than a $100,000 heart attack. But I digress. CD Projekt Red letting gamers down and gamers kicking CD Projekt Red while they're down is not what anybody wanted this Christmas because... Well, I'm going through a little bit of a rough patch. A whole year, actually. The corpo monkey business is inexcusable, no doubt. But the people hurting the most are the working class who built Night City on rock and roll from the ground up in a bold attempt to take the cinematic story-driven thrills of linear first-person shooters such as Bioshock Infinite and the narrative Legos of first-person RPGs such as The Elder Scrolls, then combine them into an open-world adventure brimming with core gameplay content that gives the player total agency over what that gameplay even even looks like Mass Effect, Doom Eternal, Whoa, Jesus, Deus Ex, 
Don't mind me. 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 Ah, Shadow Warrior. Call of Duty. Ooh. <laughs> Mirror's Edge. Friggin' go for it, dude. But and by go for it, I mean when the official PS5 version comes out. But the negative echo chambers have totally drowned out the round of applause I think lots of staff members in the bullpen could really use right now. This bummer surely costs their mental health so much more than $60 in the hassle of a refund. And now they gotta clean up the mess some suits on the board made while the entire internet's mocking them through the looking glass. After all that ambition, after all that unthinkable complexity, after all that Crunch. The light at the end of their nine year long cyberpunk tunnel turned out to be a sky the color of television tuned to a dead channel. We live 57 years before this digital dystopia takes place, but dang, cyberware didn't even need to pierce the flesh to start losing our humanity. We've got Corpo selling brain dances that crash the systems most street kids are using. We've got Netrunners stoking the fire of civil unrest by hacking people's minds with corrupt documents. And we've got wage slaves caught in the crossfire who might get blackballed from employment for crimes they didn't commit, then form a gang of nomads that develop an indie brain dance with barbershops and car customization like everyone wants. Or maybe, just maybe, the video game industry can learn from this cautionary cyberpunk tale about how the reputational risks outweigh the monetary rewards for releasing rushed, unfinished, cross-gen products with dishonest advertising. And maybe, just please maybe, the video game community will stop encouraging that corpo crap by not lashing out when games get delayed not pre-ordering games no one's ever actually seen, and for the love of Judy's booty in a wetsuit, stop spending eddies you don't have on microtransactions you don't need so the megacorps start profiting more from games that push our entertainment to the limit rather than our wallet. But pushing entertainment to the limit is what CD Projekt Red has been doing for me since Geralt of Rivia looked like this in a booth at E3 that looked like this. And now here today, in regard to V, Jackie, Pan Am, Judy, Takamura River, I guess. Oh my God, you can't bone this guy. To us. Uh oh, sorry. Oh, no. Bye River. <laughs> the Akira bike and Johnny Tsunami himself. I believe that soon they'll all have a preem spot in the storage space of every gamer's mind where some characters live on long after we close their software as an engram containing the virtual personality of a fictional friend who managed to shine among the clusters and constellations of memories we cherish, like city lights receding. Cyberpunk 2077 is a relic. Yay, he did it! Thanks for watching this very special video. We know it's a little out of the ordinary, but Matt has a lot of great words about this game's release, and I thought it would be better coming from him. But guess what? We're gonna start the new year with a good old should your boyfriend play Cyberpunk 2077, so you can hear all about what it's like to live with that. Please stick around for this word from our sponsor. Your support means the world to us. We hope you have a wonderful holiday season and happy new year. See you in 2021. Now that we're coming to the end of this very special year, there's never been a better time to get your new website up and running with Squarespace. Squarespace will help you put your best foot forward in 2021. They have tons of beautiful templates and full access to analytics like page views, traffic sources, and more. To make sure your site is reaching your target audience, Squarespace uses all the best practices for search engine optimization without needing any extra plugins. In addition to setting up third-party domains, you can purchase a domain directly from Squarespace. You can use pretty much any video background to really capture people's attention. Then they can leave a comment thanks to the integrated commenting system. Schedule posts in advance so you can enjoy some downtime. And these are just some of the great features, so please go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, check out squarespace.com slash girlfriend reviews for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.